right, so week one of the 2024 college football season is in the books, and I think it was a pretty good weekend of college football. I think we got a good mix of close matchups as well as some blowouts. I think we learned that some teams are legit. We learned that some teams definitely aren't legit. Florida State, I'm mainly speaking of. But we also need to see more out of most of the teams that played. We had a really good slate of games last weekend. This weekend, I don't think is quite to that same level, okay? I think we have a few pretty good games, and I'm going to highlight the five best today. But I don't think it's quite to the same level that we saw this past weekend. Lucky for us, it's one of the few weekends in college football this season that's like that. Because of conference realignment, there are just loads of great games this year. And this is probably one of the weaker weekends, and yet we still have some huge high-profile matchups, namely Texas-Michigan. I'll get into that game at the very end. But I'm going to highlight the five best, at least the five most interesting to me this week in college football. And I want to start off with Tennessee and NC State. So obviously, Tennessee looked fantastic in week one. Everyone is going to say that it's Chattanooga, and it is Chattanooga, and I understand that you can't take a whole lot out of the fact that Tennessee won specifically 69-3, to but just watching them play, I think everyone can see that this team is entirely different than they were last year under Joe Milton. Nico Iamaleava is going to return this offense to what it was back in 2022. I've been saying this since I started this channel last year. This is going to be an excellent offense that Tennessee has this year. And not only because of Nico, but because of Dylan Sampson as well. People who don't know Dylan Sampson yet are going to know who he is very soon. Because even though Jalen Wright was the best running back on Tennessee last year, and he went off to the NFL draft and he's gone now, Dylan Sampson is going to take over as if they didn't lose anything at all. He is that good of a player, at least in my estimation. I would be surprised if he did not live up to that expectation. He's a really, really solid player. I really like him a lot, and I think he's going to make this offense balanced. It's going to give it the balance that it needs to have if they want to be a contender in the SEC, and I think they will be. For this matchup with NC State, I don't think that there's any chance that Tennessee loses this game. I just don't. You know, the Wolfpack, they beat Western Carolina, but their defense didn't look as good as I expected it to look. I know Kevin Concepcion is an outstanding player. He's going to be a force in this game, but he's really all NC State has. They don't really have anyone else outside of him. And I expected their defense to be the strength of this team. They didn't look great against a pretty inferior opponent in Western Carolina. Tennessee is miles above that. I think that they could really lay a number on NC State in this game. Do not be surprised if Tennessee wins this game by 35 to 40 points. And I know there's going to be some NC State fans pounding their fists saying, we have Grayson McCall now, and he's going to be an excellent quarterback, and Kevin Concepcion on the outside, that tandem is all we need on the offense. I happen to disagree when you're going against a team like Tennessee. And Tennessee I have in the playoff. I picked him to go to playoff before the season started. Their last game against Chattanooga, as meaningless as it might be, only furthered those beliefs. And I do believe that Tennessee will be a top 10 team this year. They're not ranked there now. I think they'll get there eventually, perhaps after this game, if they win in the fashion that I'm expecting them to. And on top of everything else, Tennessee's defense is better than people realize. They made great strides last season from what they were in 2022. And think about a world in which the 2022 Tennessee offense returns This 2024 offense is that 2022 form, but they are now complemented by a, maybe not a great defense, but a very good defense. Think about how good of a team that could be, how successful of a team that could be. That is the ceiling for Tennessee this season, and that is a pretty darn high ceiling. Few teams have a higher ceiling than that. Now, most people are probably going to think that I'm too high on Tennessee, But I don't think most people would believe that Tennessee is going to lose this game. I find it hard to believe that almost anybody could pick NC State to win this game. I like the Vols big. Now the next game I want to talk about is an unranked matchup, but perhaps more anticipated than the Tennessee-NC State game for me. And that is Colorado at Nebraska. It's no secret what Colorado is, right? They have two of the best players in college football. It is even possible that they have the two best players in college football, period. And I don't believe that that is a definite thing or by any means. All the respect to Carson Beck, guys like James Spears. I'm just saying these are at least two of the top five players in college football. And quarterback Shadur Sanders 
And then wide receiver slash cornerback Travis Hunter, who is probably the best player in college football. He was, and Shador, they were both absolutely phenomenal against North Dakota State and probably even better than they were last year. Now, Nebraska is one of those teams that can win in other areas, namely the line of scrimmage. The thing is, Nebraska won the line of scrimmage dramatically last year. I think they had seven or eight sacks on Shadour Sanders last year, and yet they still lost the game, I believe, 36-14. to So how did that happen? Well, it happened because they had completely subpar quarterback play with Jeff Sims. It was absolutely awful. They turned the ball over several times. That's how that game got out of hand. Will that happen this year? The turning the ball over aspect is not impossible. Dylan Rayola, as good as he might be, as talented as he might be, is a true freshman. And I know he looked good last week. And I know Colorado doesn't exactly have a formidable defense. But it is still a step well above what he faced last week. And it's also a stage that he has not been in yet. So it is not at all out of the question that Dylan Raiola makes some big-time mistakes in this game. The thing is, he's also capable of making some massive plays for the Nebraska offense in a way that they could not do last season. And I don't think that the Colorado defense is good enough to stop him from doing that. And that's why I like Nebraska to win this game, because they're going to win the line of scrimmage. And they're going to win in several areas, aside from the matchup with Travis Hunter, Shadur Sanders, will probably throw for a lot of yards in this game because he's going to throw the ball a lot in this game. Jimmy Horn is an excellent receiver. Let's give credit where credit is due. Jimmy Horn is a phenomenal player. And it's not just a Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter offense. Jimmy Horn is just as big of a part of that offense. And he's made huge strides since last year. However, Nebraska is going to be able to counter the offense that Colorado generates this year, in my opinion. And even though Dylan Raiola might throw one, maybe even two interceptions or maybe an interception and a fumble, even if he does that, he's going to be able to put points on the board. And that's why I think Nebraska wins this game on top of the fact that they have this game at home. I believe in Matt Rule as a head coach. I'm not going to lie. I do not believe in Deion Sanders as a head coach. I don't think he has the formula to build a sustainable program. I like Nebraska. I'm going to leave it there. I like them probably pretty close in this game. I don't think that there's much of a chance that it's a blowout either way. But I'm going to take the Cornhuskers here for the purposes of this video. Probably in a score of around 31 to 28. All right, next is Georgia Tech in Syracuse. Not going to spend quite as much time on this one. But I think it's a really good matchup in the ACC. Now, obviously, Georgia Tech's win against Florida State doesn't look as good anymore. Because Florida State clearly isn't a very good team this year. We know that. But I still think Georgia Tech is a legitimately good team and maybe not a great team or by any means but I do think that they're improved from last year and I think that they're probably one of the top five contenders to win the ACC but Syracuse is also very underrated and the reason why they're underrated now is because of Kyle McCord because even though he did not pan out the way Ohio State fans were hoping he would he's still a five-star quarterback the guy's still got talent and he threw for a bunch of yards last week, over 350 yards. They've got one of the best tight ends in the country, Aranda Godsden the second. The guy is a very good player. He's a very good receiving tight end. If you haven't seen him play, you're probably not familiar with him. But I promise you, if you watch this game, he will show up several times. They also have a pretty good running back in LaQuint Allen. He looked pretty good last week. And the reason why I'm so impressed with Syracuse after last week's performance is because Ohio, the team that they played, had a top 10 defense last year. Yes, I know the level of competition isn't anywhere near power four, but top 10 regardless. There are plenty of other teams in that group of five who did not achieve the same level of success on defense that Ohio did. And even though they might not be the same defense this year, I guarantee you they're still going to be one of the better defenses in the group of five. They're not to be scoffed at. Syracuse did a phenomenal job on offense. I think that they could legitimately have a pretty good offense this year in the ACC. Now, Georgia Tech on the other side had a somewhat disappointing performance defensively last weekend. I think that was somewhat expected after the Florida State emotional win. But they still won the game 35-12. to It wasn't some nail-biter, down-to-the-wire, they're almost going to get upset type of game. They still won the game relatively comfortably. Now, can Syracuse stop the Georgia Tech running game is what I'm asking. Because Syracuse's defense, I think, has a lot of question marks. And Georgia Tech can run the ball when they need to. They proved that last year. 
And I think that they have a lot of the pieces this year to do it again. Personally, I don't think they're going to be able to stop the Georgia Tech running game. And I also think that Georgia Tech has a bit more speed on defense this year. And even though they struggled a little bit last weekend, they showed me a lot in that Florida State game with the way that they were able to attack downhill, attack the line of scrimmage. That was a level of speed on defense that I haven't seen from Georgia Tech in a while. So I think that they're going to be better on defense than really they showed last weekend. And I think that Syracuse, while they're going to be pretty good offensively this year, and they'll probably put up some yards in this game, I don't think it's going to be enough to quite pull off the win. And I'm going to take the Yellow Jackets. They move to 3-0. All right, now it's the very interesting game out west. Boise State versus number 7 Oregon dropped four spots after that close win over Idaho. Now, I get that the game score-wise, was not what Oregon fans wanted it to be. But statistically, Oregon still dominated the game. They just did. They held Idaho to under 50 yards rushing. Dylan Gabriel threw for almost 400 yards passing himself. The most disappointing part of this game for Oregon by far was their running game, and that was mainly due to the offensive line. I don't think that this is really on the running backs at all. I don't think Jordan James or Noah Whittington are to be blamed for this. The offensive line played a terrible game against Idaho of all teams, that cannot be a trend. If they are not miles better than they showed this last weekend, then my pick that I picked just about a week ago, right before week one, for them to win the national championship, there is no chance that that happens. I don't think that there's any shot that Oregon can win a national championship with the offensive line playing like that. They have to be significantly better. I thought that they would really come out and play extremely well against a way overmatched Idaho team. That did not happen. Oregon has to be significantly better this weekend against really not that great of a Boise State defense. Boise State is carried by their offense and Ashton Genty. And that brings me to the other side of the ball. Oregon defensively was pretty good against Idaho. Boise State is a different animal. Boise State has an excellent offense, particularly because of their running game with one of the best running backs in the country, Ashton Genty, the guy is going to be one of the first running backs taken in the NFL draft despite his small stature. He is a phenomenal player, and I think that he has the skill set to be successful against defenses even like this. He is incredibly skilled. So he's going to get his yardage in this game, I have a feeling. Despite how much I believe in Oregon's defense and how much I believe in their ability to stop the run just like they did last year, this guy's a different breed. I think Boise State's going to put up some points in this game. But Oregon put up yards just like we expected them to against Idaho. The problem was they were 7 for 16 on third down. They failed to capitalize on some opportunities. Oregon is a lot better than 24 points. And I think that they show that in this game. I think they put up over 50 points in this game. And they win this one by a few scores in a shootout. I love the Ducks. I still think that they can accomplish everything that I said that they could accomplish. But their ability to capitalize, and especially their offensive line, have to improve dramatically. I think to a large extent they will in this game. And I think the Ducks win probably by about 17 points in this game. And then finally, and perhaps most importantly, it is the game in the big house between number three Texas and number 10 Michigan. One of the most anticipated games of the entire college football season. Not just for me, but for everyone that loves to watch college football. These are two storied programs. Michigan obviously coming off of their national championship year. Texas kind of feels like they're on the verge of potentially getting there. This is an incredible matchup. And obviously, Texas looked better than Michigan in week one. We all know that. That's not a surprise at all because Texas offensively is way further along than Michigan. However... Michigan's offense, I thought, looked more concerning than even I expected. And I thought that they would look a bit more uncomfortable, particularly because of the massive amount of turnover on their roster, including at the quarterback position. But they just did not resemble the J.J. McCarthy Michigan teams to me at all. They did not make massive plays in the running game. They certainly did not make massive plays in the passing game. And to be honest, I thought that Davis Warren did not look as sharp as I expected him to. I thought that Davis Warren should get the start because I thought that Michigan needed that potential in the passing game if they wanted to achieve their goals this year. I didn't think that Alex Orgy would provide that for them, and yet I still thought that he would get the start because I thought that the coaching staff was going to think that he was better for the job. 
It turns out that they agreed with me in thinking that Davis Warren was better for the job. But he didn't look as good as I thought he was going to look. And he definitely did not look anywhere near the level of J.J. McCarthy. And I don't think at any point this year he's going to be able to provide that for them. J.J. McCarthy was a special player for this program. It's not even fair to Davis Warren to expect that from him. I just watched him a bit in his practices. I saw him in the spring game. I thought he looked really good then. I guess my expectations were a little bit too high. And he's going to have his work cut out for him because Texas is going to have a pretty good defense. They do lose two great defensive tackles. But I'm not as concerned about that as I think a lot of people are. I think Texas is still going to have a phenomenal run defense. And Donovan Edwards, I'm sorry, I've never ever been one to hype up Donovan Edwards for the simple reason that he has been solely a home run hitter for this offense and lately last year for most of the games that he played in and already so far this year he has not had the yards per carry average that Michigan fans would like him to have if they're going to be successful this season absolutely not Khalil Mullings looks significantly better in that regard so Donovan Edwards I'm not sure is going to be the type of player that people expected him to be this season, partially because of that new offensive line. That offensive line is not going to be what it was the past two seasons. And Donovan Edwards is going to have to be able to churn out some tough yardage, not just be a home run hitter. He needs to be more of an every down back. I'm not sure that he can be that. And I'm also not sure that Michigan has a lot on the outside, outside of Colston Loveland. I liked what I saw from Tyler Morris in the few flashes he had last season. But can I be sure that that's going to happen consistently this season? Absolutely not. Colson Loveland is the only sure thing on that offense. I said before the season started, he's by far the best player on this offense. So Michigan is going to have to utilize him tremendously. They're going to have to get a phenomenal game out of their offensive line. And they're going to have to have some receivers step up. That's a lot of what ifs and a lot of hypotheticals and a lot of hoping for the Michigan offense. On the other side, Texas's offense, there's no questions there. And despite the fact that they had a lot of turnover at the receiving position, they added a ton of fantastic receivers. They are incredibly deep there. You talk about Isaiah Bond, you talk about Matthew Golden, Silas Bolden, Ryan Wingo, Jonte Cook. They've got plenty of playmakers there. And there's just no question to me that Texas is going to have one of the best offenses in the country this season, also because you get Quinn Ewers back at quarterback. And I'm not the highest on Quinn Ewers, but for this offense, for the Steve Sarkeesian system, he's fantastic. And he's going to be an amazing conductor of this offense. I think that this system that Steve Sarkeesian runs is built to have success against even the most talented, the most suffocating defenses like Michigan. Now, Obviously, I could be wrong about that because this Michigan defense is that good. You talk about Will Johnson, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, Makari Page. I mean, they lost a lot off their defense, and yet they returned so much that you almost kind of forget about all that they lost. They have one of the best defenses in the country yet again this year. And because their defense is so good, you cannot totally write off Michigan in any game. Their defense is going to be able to keep them in any game or at least have the potential to keep them in any game. Will they be able to handle all of the motion, the eye candy, the misdirection, the lineman pulling that Steve Sarkeesian implements into this system? It's extremely difficult for any defense to do. They're one of the few that could potentially stop it, but I'm not going to bet on that. I'm going to take Texas to win this game in a close game because it's at Michigan and Michigan's still a great team. But I'm going to take Texas to win this game because I don't think that Michigan's going to have enough offensively to counter what Texas outputs offensively themselves. I think that Texas will probably struggle in some moments offensively in this game because of just how suffocating that Michigan defense can be. But eventually they'll find their footing. I don't think that there's any defense that's going to completely shut down Texas this year. Their offense is too darn talented, too darn explosive. They have the advantage at far more positions than Michigan does in this game. Last year couldn't have said the same thing, but this year, Texas is going to be the better team. And I think that if Texas loses this game, that's going to be a tremendous blow on this season. Texas's schedule is not easy. They still have to play Georgia, and they still have several tough games coming up. So they have to win this game. They really have to win this game, and I think that they do. 
I do think that last year was a microcosm of what's to come this year and years beyond. I think Steve Sarkeesian has finally found his footing as a head coach. This is going to be a really good team this year. I picked them to finish a undefeated regular season, which was pretty ambitious and something that not a lot of people were doing. Is it a long shot? Yeah, maybe, but also maybe not. Texas has that kind of talent. They have the coaching staff. They now have the confidence. I really like this team, and I like Michigan too. And I picked Michigan to have a better season than probably most people did. But this is one of the games that I predicted them to lose, and I'm going to stand by that. Texas wins by 10 in Ann Arbor, just like they did last year in Tuscaloosa. So, those are my thoughts. And again, week two, maybe not the craziest slate of games that we've ever seen, but yet there's still a lot of great college football to entertain us all day, and I'm certainly ready for it. It's going to be a great weekend. I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which game are you most excited for? Who do you think is going to have the best performance this weekend? And who do you think is going to take that Texas-Michigan matchup? Let me know. Make sure you give me a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. The content's going to continue to roll out as this season goes along. You're not going to want to miss it. And with that, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.